So the key points to take away from web writing, uh, the biggest one, users scan and skim. Right? That's just the nature of how users are going to use or our readers are going to use a website. And that goes for anything. I mean, some of you are sitting out there and say, well, I'm not going to ever write for a website. I don't plan to be a web developer or anything like that. And that's fine. But even if you're writing something like a discussion board post, you're going to want to keep in mind that users tend to scan and skim that. So put your conclusions up front. Make them relevant, keep them concise, short, and to the point. And if they want more information, provide that afterwards. It's very similar to the way that uh, a journalist operates, with a slug line at the very beginning, with all of the key information, and then they develop, and then the least relevant things are at the end. Okay. So give users a roadmap. Use those action words to direct them to the next step. Help them know where they want to go. And so then, as they say, help us dig for oil or drill for oil, not plant the field. Uh, and then finally, and perhaps most importantly, grammar and spelling conventions still apply. Uh, this is one thing people tend to think, well, I'm online now, so I, it's a text message. It's not a text message. It's still very much writing that's going to be identified with you. It's writing that's uh, out there and should be useful. And, the, and so grammar and spelling conventions still very much apply. Okay. So the next uh, major thing I want to talk about then is uh, email writing. Um, so whereas the first one applied more to things like blogs and wikis and discussion boards, this is going to apply obviously to emails. But any sort of online communication that you do is, should follow these sort of strategies. Right? So to begin with email writing, uh, the emphasis on content. So on the left we have, uh, this starts with the subject line, I guess is where I want to go with this. Uh, subject line is very important. Goes back to kind of what we said before. Users are going to be in a scan and skim mode when they're looking at their computer screen. And they want to be able to know immediately in a concise and direct fashion, what is it? Why is this relevant to me? What, is, what are the action words that you want from me? What is it that you want? So poor subject lines. Well, blank. Blank subject lines tell us nothing. Don't leave your subject line blank. Uh, second, a subject line like today's class. This wouldn't work because when is today? Whose class? What class? You know, wh and what is the action there that you're asking me to take? Uh, the third one that's received an awful lot, hello. Well, well hello to you too. Uh, what, what do you want? Uh, it's sort of like that moment when the solicitor calls and says, hello. I think, um, you want something from me, but I'm not clear what yet. Uh, same idea here. So looking for more useful subject lines are going to be those that follow the conventions we already talked about. Uh, like a subject, Missing English 111, Section 1G on 913. Okay? This is better because, well, it gives us the who. Who are you? What is this all about? The when. And it also gives you the subject of the action. I'm missing this class, and this is why I'm writing it. Uh, the second subject there, uh, Request for Information on Assistant Zookeeper Position. I doubt anyone's going to be a zookeeper. I just thought I'd pick a random one. Uh, what does the person want from that? Well, they are requesting information of whoever they're writing to on the assistant zookeeper position. Concise, relevant. The person can look at that subject and never read the email and have a sense of what it is you want. All right? Uh, the second on content, then, is keeping that message rele relevant and concise, as we talked about before with, uh, with web writing. The best option uh, is to cut and paste any relevant material that you need to include. So not only do you want your message to be relevant, but let's say that you want to attach uh, part of your writing or something like that. The best thing you can do is cut and paste the relevant material so that the person can go to that body of an email, read what you want, read the section you want them to talk about, and then respond. All right? This is a big one because it's difficult sometimes to think about, well, what is it? The, the easiest option is always just to make to do the attachment or something like that. But that's not the most useful. The most effective, cut and paste the relevant material. If you can't do that, if it's a longer piece, and you want to attach the document, that's your next option. Okay. But the option that makes, I think, everybody cringe is cutting and pasting the entire document into the body of the email. I don't know if you've received an email like this, but very hard to navigate, usually garbled, not the most effective. So these are a little bit more practical, um, but in terms of the content itself, keeping that message relevant and concise. And that involves uh, choosing what to include and what not to 